I'm John Messina, Athletic Director, St. Lucie West Centennial High School and home of our monthly edition of Hey Coach. Today we're going to bring two gentlemen, good friends of mine, who are an integral part of high school athletics. You know, we talk about the coaches, we talk about the teams, but tonight we're going to talk about the officials. First of all, I want to introduce Roger Butterfield. Roger is the president of the Treasure Coast Officials Association and Bernard Jethro who's the softball commissioner, and I guess, Bernard, you do every single sport, is that correct? No, I do football, basketball, volleyball, softball. Okay, almost okay. every single sport, <laughs> you know. But uh, we're, we're going to try to get into officiating, high school officiating, how it's changed over the years, you know, professional officiating, and, and, and you know, a lot of, I hate to use the word, but there has been violence toward officials in, in, in the last few years. It's something we're going to talk about. Roger, let's start with you. Give me a little bit of your background. Um, I graduated from Martin County High School, uh, came back from college and was a real estate appraiser on the Treasury Coast for 20 years mm -hmm. in a family business. Uh, when that ended, I used my accounting degree and now I'm the director of finance at the YMCA down in West Palm Beach. Okay. Bernard? I graduated from Fort Pierce Central High School. Okay. I spent 30 years in the fire service. I uh, retired in 2013. So you're my golf partner next year. Yes, we, we sir. Got that, we got that down pat, <laughs> right? Fact, that's why I just come from know. playing golf. Okay. And uh, now, how did you get involved in officiating, Roger? My son was playing youth football at the okay. Port St. Lucie Athletic Association, and I'd always coach, not him, but on the team. And then when the other kids grew up and he didn't, and decided not to play. I wanted to go back and be around the kids. And my wife said, you are not going to go do that four nights a week and all day Saturday for free if he's not playing. So I got a hold of some people who were doing officiating and it's let me be around the kids and the competition and it's just one of the greatest things I've ever gotten involved in. Enjoy it immensely. It's my recreation. That's great. Bernard, I know you like, I know you enjoy it because you always walk in with this big <laughs> smile on your face. Before the game. Oh, yeah. I got into it uh, through Carlos Finn. Okay. Uh, you know, back in, you know, when we used to do Pop Warner football okay. at J.C. Field, where the old poli where the police station is now. Now, we were going to bring Carlos on, but it's still only 28 minutes. Okay? <laughs> so, you know, he got me into it, and I, I kind of fell in love with it. You know, it's, yeah. you know, getting out there, you know, with the players and, you know, just interacting yeah. with them. Yeah. And I stopped one time and started coaching Pop Warner football. And then I went back to officiating again. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think the difference between officiating and coaching is? Look, one, the coaches see it one way. Right. The officials see it the other way. The fans see it another way. And the players see it another way. Okay. You know, we all see it different. <laughs> You know, and you know, and and coaches, you know, most of the time, I think coaches they're working for the team. You know, when you have a coach out there, hooping and hollering, complaining. You know, he may not be complaining about the game; he's just trying to get something for his team. Yeah. And as an official, you got to realize, you know, hey, he's just hollering. He's not trying to create a whole lot of stuff. We know when he's going over the limit. Yeah. You know. And do you you have different limits for different coaches? I would I would say. Yes, yes, you have different there. Sometimes, you know, you, you, when, uh, you get coaches, you know, they always want to be in your ear about, hey, you know, trying to put a bug in your ear, watch right. that holding, watch that, watch that, yeah. you know, and you kind of like, hey, coach, listen, we got it. Yeah. We'll take care of it. Yeah. And some coaches, you know, as soon as the ball is tossed <laughs> or it's kicked, they're just raising the sand. Yeah. You know, we've had a few coaches that sometimes they don't even last a quarter. Yeah. They may be ejected from a ball game in basketball. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, your most memorable moment as an officiate, as an official. The thing I'm going to take with me, and I've been doing this for 16 years now, is at the end of a game or a tournament or a long Pop Warner day, you look at the other officials because you're the third team, and you shake their hands. You know that you are all there for the same thing at the same time. And that really is what I'm going to take 
take with me. Now, I was lucky enough to go with Bernard to a state championship football game. I've done some high-level wrestling tournaments, but that's really my deal. Anything that sticks out in your mind, Bernard? A game, something special? Uh, it's two. Okay. First, I did the state championship in basketball, where it was on TV and then, you know, tape delayed, I can come home and sit and watch myself, critique myself on how I did during the game. That was great. And also doing a state championship in football. I've done it twice where you're on TV and, you know, your buddy's calling you up, hey, man, I see you on TV, man. Hey, hey you missed that call, you know, just joking with you and stuff like that. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed going out there, and that's the highlight. I, I think I had two memorable moments with officials. And I always learned a long time ago, being from Miami, get on the good side of the officials. And, and you guys know me as a coach and everything, mm -hmm. and it, it, sometimes it's just not worth it. But I remember one game, we're down in Miami Pace, and we're in the old sectional finals. The sectional was one game away going from the state. And we had our, our pickoff play at second base where we're faking back and forth, back and forth, and we wheel and we throw the ball. Well, we picked the guy off so bad, we picked the official off. It was a three-man crew, and we had two guys on, so second base is open. Okay, if you, know, if you know what I'm talking about. So I go flying out there, and I go, and before I got there, the umpire, Herb Lutale, great guy, passed away a few years ago, comes, John, I blew the call, John. I blew the call. I'm sorry, I blew the call. You can yell as much as you want, but I blew the call. <laughs> now, what are you going to say? You can't. Yeah. I, I sat there, and I, I was embarrassed. I said, Herb, I'm sorry. Now, I'm apologizing for him missing the call. <laughs> and and it's it just, I, I appreciate him so much. And then, um, I think it was 2002, um, I was helping out with the Centennial baseball team. And we made it to the finals that year. We went up to Yankee Stadium up in Tampa. So as we get to play, we're playing Bishop Kenny. And 20 years ago to the date, when I was coaching at Pace, I played Bishop Kenny. And, and Bob Williams was the same coach there. And the umpire was Don Bridges, who I played in the second game. <laughs> so I'm saying to myself, we got to take a picture of this. And, and, you know, sometimes it was just so enjoyable. But, but, but like you said, if an umpire is honest and he's doing his best, there's no way you can really criticize somebody. Okay? I, I love a lot of times when we go up to Vero Beach, and I, I hear the fans yell from the stands, oh, it's a homer, you're up in Indian. <laughs> Those were our officials. Those are the yeah. same officials you're gonna get in South County, but mm -hmm. people don't realize that. And I, I think that's something that I think we have to educate the parents and the fans a little more about what officiating is all about, okay? Now, Roger, what makes a good official? I know that's a tough question, but what do you think makes a good official? I think it's someone who cares. Uh, the, now, the, how would you say, when you say cares, give me they, an example they, 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 they care about getting it right. Okay. Even though they don't do it all the time. I, I had a good friend of mine told me that there are three reasons to officiate. Okay. One is if you love the sport, it's about the kids, and somebody did it for you. If you go out there with a big ego, if you go out there, and we've had some over the years, oh, I know this coach, he's blah, 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 you're not going to do no. a good job. Now, if you had a game, and we had one of these coaches that you knew was going to be a problem, I'm trying to say very nicely, notice this one on TV, <laughs> would you try to, before the game, a little bit diffuse that? Would you have a talk with him, or would you just wait till he makes his first move? Well, I've, I, I like to go over and introduce myself and shake his hand and say, okay. Coach, I'm Roger Butterfield, I'm going to be working your sideline, or whatever it is I'm doing. I want you to know that if you have a question, we can certainly talk about it. Final decision is going to be mine, and we'll move on from there. I've also learned that if a coach needs to be ejected, you can do it with a smile on your face, and nobody needs to be really upset about it. Bernard, what makes a good official? To me, a good official, you get out, you work hard, you get up on your rules, and during a ball game, you're approachable. You're the type of guy that, that's you know, if a coach has a question yeah. and you can answer it, hey, you answer it. You know, if you blow a call and the coach is acting up, don't take him or throw him out the game because you blew the call. Right. Be able to take that. You got to yeah. learn how to give and take some. And you got to stop having a good official, he forgets about the crowd. 
you know, because, you know, people in the crowd, they're yeah. going to say a whole lot of things. They're going to complain. You know, everybody's not going to be on your side. You're never going to win with the crowd. No. You're know, <laughs> never going to win. My thing is 50% is on your side, 50% is against you, whatever call you make. But, so, but you got to go out there and you got to be able to, to make that call. Okay. Regardless of what, to, if you make that call in the first period, you make that same call three seconds left in the fourth period when, you know, game is on the line and be able to handle in a situation that comes up. In different sports, because you coach many different sports, do you have different ways for officials contact you in different sports? For example, would you give a football coach a little more leeway than when you're doing softball? No, I give coaches the same thing. Okay. Let's give them the same respect okay. in any sport. You know, I'm approachable. We're going to talk. Oh, you know, if, if they have a problem, you know, they can come to me. If, you know, we're not going to hold up the yeah. game. But if it's between innings or whatever, yeah. timeout, you want to ask a question, hey, I'm there to answer your question for you. But we're not going to keep getting into it every time you turn around. You want to talk about it, talk about it, talk yeah. about it. You know, and, but I treat everybody the same. Okay. You know, it's, it's not, I'm not, I'm not judge, jury, and executioner out there. You know, I'm out there to do the ball game, you know, and try to make it the playing level even for everybody, call it straight down the line. You know, one of the things we mentioned before we came on air, I was talking about soccer and how soccer can be so different than the other sports. Football, a penalty in football, an unsportsmanlike penalty, a personal foul in football, you get 15 yards. Mm -hmm. You do that in soccer, you're thrown out of the game and you're a man short and then you're suspended for a few more games. Mm -hmm. I thought, we mentioned what a great job I thought Adam did with the soccer officials this year that the, everybody was on the same page. But the one thing I noticed about soccer, more than any other sports, is that there's a constant back and forth between the players and the officials. And it's just part of the game. I mean, if, if you watch the professional soccer leagues, if you, you know, watch the World Cup, they're always talking. I, I couldn't see that in football. I could definitely not see that in baseball or softball where there's a constant barrage, you know. Mm. But when, when you say, what makes a good official? I used to think, well, officials, not know, you don't notice them. No, I think he's an integral part of that game. And I'll give you an example. A good friend of mine, Juan Cobb, I don't know if you know Juan. He's the um, soccer coach at Martin County. Oh, yeah. And he, he does big-time soccer games, and he has done college levels. And when he was doing, he took a year or so off, and he was coaching high school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes they really get at it in soccer, and that's just part of the game. But I see Juan stop the game, call time on himself, bring the two players over with a smile on his face and say, fellas, next time you're gone. Mm -hmm. And he controls it. And I think that's what makes a good official, too. You don't notice him sometimes, but he controls the game. You never let it get out of hand. Yes. Um, now, on this other topic, and I, I, I think this is something that I'm afraid is not getting any better, you look at violence toward the officials that has happened. Um, in high school, we had that horrible situation in Texas where a coach told two players, take the official out and during the football game. And the play went on, yeah. and they took him out, mm -hmm. and you know, there's a lot of, well, he did this, and he did this, and he did this. And, and the young men listened to him, which was very surprising. And first of all, the coach should right. never do that. And then I was just watching a basketball game the other night, I think it was Oregon State and Utah, yes, and, yes. and the player tripped the official. Yeah. I mean, there's another case in New York where uh, a coach came out on the field and headbutted the official. Um, there's a lot of instances over the years. I mean, you know, you, you put soccer up there. You look at the soccer officials after the game, they need armed guards to get out mm -hmm. of some of these things. But what can we do? I mean, I don't see it getting any better. If, I've, if this is something since I started my career to now, I think it's getting worse. And I think we do have to educate the public. You know, you don't really have a stake in the game. Okay. No. Um, outside of those rumors years ago about that NBA official throwing games and, mm -hmm. and doing things like that, there has never been a stake in the game uh, for the officials. What do you think we can do to, to educate the public about that? Well, I think that's a good question. Of course, in Florida, uh, assault on an official is a felony now. It's okay. not simple 
uh, battery. Okay. Um, and frankly, our area was one of the big reasons for that change because in one year in youth football, we had a uh, baseball guy get part of his ear bitten off by a parent. Oh, wow. We had a soccer guy get a concussion from a headbutt, and then there was a third battery at a, at a, at a youth little league baseball game. Um, which makes no sense to me. Uh, I was taught coming up that when the game's over, you gather your people, and how did Joe Wild used to say it? Steal away into the night? Yes. And just try, but you know, if you just uh, let the people know, we're, we don't care who wins the ball game. It's not important to us. What do you think, Bernard? I think a lot of coaches, they get caught up in the game. They're in the game, you know, they're fighting for the kids, and all of a sudden now it's starting to get personal. You know, we had an incident um, over the summer where doing uh, travel softball right up in Martin County where official, the game didn't mean anything. It was just like a scrimmage, but he constantly was on the official and the official. So finally the official said, okay, you are done. You're out of here. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, if I'm done, I'm going get to get my money's worth. <laughs> so he walked over and headbutted the official. Wow. And we had the police out, and he wound up getting arrested. For that, but but looking at that situation, the coaches they get too involved, they get okay. too emotionally into it, and they don't know when to let it go. They watch a lot of the NBA fish officials, professional football officials, how they can just talk to coaches, mm -hmm. talk to officials, you know, any kind of way. But they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. You know, we're out making less than that. <laughs> so, but just a little, just a little. But they I'm think sure. that they can. They can coach that way yeah. in youth ball. Correct. And it doesn't work that way. You know, we try to be as nice as we can coach. You know, it's, that's not it. But yeah. they get caught up in the game yeah. a lot. And then the fans start getting involved in it. And it just gets out of control. It becomes an ego thing, too. Yes, and, it is. And, and, you know, just using baseball as an example, I remember when I first started coaching, okay, somebody threw an inside pitch and hit you. You'd run down to first base. You wouldn't say a word, and the worst thing, you would never rub, never show that it hurt. Yeah. Now, you could be a foot away from you, and you're ready to charge the mound. The coach is ready to charge the mound. The coach is yelling at the umpire, throw him out of the game. And, and, and you know, it's something that we got to control, but that the violence is really, so it's almost scary to a point that, that what can we do safe for safety reasons? Now, I think we've been very, very good in this area. We have a great mm -hmm. working relationship with the TCOA. If there's a situation, we'll sit down and talk about it. Um, you know, hopefully we can educate the fans. But that's something I think you made a great point that the coaches take it. And now it's personal. It's not personal. It's, it's not personal. If, if there's a coach that has a problem with the official, Okay, now, now here's a question for you, Raj. Say we had a coach and he has a personal problem with the fit. It just doesn't work. Are they allowed to say, hey, maybe we want, don't want this official at a game? Or how would you handle something like that? We have a no hard scratch rule in the TCOA. Okay, meaning can explain that to They can insert that a scratch is when an official is, is taken off okay. a game or away from the school. Okay. So we will, but we will try to work with that okay. coach or that right. school and not insulate them right. for that official because they're liable to see him at away games That's him or her the, right but uh i don't think for the most part there's a reason to ask for a problem and, and i think if it's a really bad situation you bring them together and you say hey let's work this out because like you said even if you could scratch them from the home games, they can get an away game, they can get them in a district game, and then we're magnifying the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we have a great number of officials that do an outstanding job, but I think we need more. How can we get the high school kids, and, and how can we get especially female high school kids, how can we get them involved? What can we do as athletic directors, as coaches, to get them involved? To me, I think we need to get the schools to put it out more. I think they should have it in every school. Hey, listen, we're lo you're looking for officials in every sport. If you're interested, come out. You know, it's a good way to make a little cash for a young person. You know, we have a little 16 year old kid now. He's doing basketball. Uh, he did a game at Centennial the other night. Yeah. I don't know his name, but yeah. you know, you and that's just kind of stuff. If yeah. we can get every school. 
to put it yeah. out there that they're looking for officials, you know, kids to come out and yeah. to learn the game because we're really desperate for officials. How short are you guys, Roger? How short? Yeah. Well, the let's just use football as an example. Everybody okay. understands that we went from uh, sixty-four to forty-eight okay. registered officials. Now, if you understand that some weekends we have seven Friday night games, and most teams want uh, six officials on the field plus a scorekeeper, we've had to go out of the area to uh, bring some people in. Right. Uh, I think sometimes there's a continuity problem. Right. You're not used to working with people. But the state of Florida, the FHSAA, has a great student officials program. Right. Anybody that's 16 years old that wants to become an official signs up with an association like ours. We bring them in in football, and, and I forced my son to become one because Lincoln Park didn't have a football team. And by the time he, before he hit 18, he was on the field working junior varsity games. He was working the youth games with me and making the same money I was. And during varsity, he'd be up running the clock and I'd be on the field and he'd make me by the wings at the end of the night. <laughs> but it's a great program. Right. Now, how much can the young men and women make for a game? It all depends on the sport. Okay. Mm -hmm. let's, know, let's take basketball, for example. Basketball, a JV game, I think the JV game is 45 plus $12 travel. And the freshman game is the, also the same thing. So if he comes out and, you know, he, he wants to work, he, because there's a lot of basketball games. Correct. You know, we have guys doubling up a lot, you know, during yeah. the freshman and the right. JV game. And they can come out. They can probably do a couple of games a week. During the season, you know, make them a little money, and then they can go to, um, they have the YMCA Tracks. and all the youth mm -hmm. basketball going on. They can come out there and do that, you know, to learn the game. Right. And as they keep going, if they're not going to go to college, you know, they can get into officiating and, you know, it, no matter, you know, the sky's the limit. And it's only a few hours. So say you're making the 45 plus the 12, which is 57, and say you have, you know, JV basketball games, sometimes they drag on, as we <laughs> yeah. know. Okay, um, so you're looking at two hours, another half hour, so two and a half hours for $57. It's not bad, you know, and, and, and you're learning. It's almost like, it, and maybe we could sit together, Roger, before the end of the year, if you guys can visit the physical education classes for each school and do a presentation. Okay, I know we need more female officials. Everybody sees that. I mean, you need female officials for, for female games. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's something I think we, we really have to do. But you guys can't do it. You can't do it yourselves. We have to do it. We have to push as athletic directors. But a lot of times I think kids are not aware of that. But also, while we're doing that, we're educating the fans. We're educating the spectators what officiating is all about. And, and again, that's something that I think is lacking. I, I know it's lacking in professional sports. And that brings me to the next topic, which we could probably go on for hours with, is, is just the future of officiating. Now with the instant replay, the cameras here, the cameras there. Um, I, I think this first start, I was trying to say, when was the first time we started to have technology taking over? And you know what sport it was? Swimming. Remember when mm -hmm. everybody had all the officials lined the up touch and yeah, they would touch, touch and they raised their hand mm -hmm. and touch first. And then they, they were the first sport, if I'm not mistaken, even before instant replay, that had, you know, the automatic timers. But remember, they used to have all the judges line up. I remember mm -hmm. watching the Olympics and they're all wearing their big straw hats. <laughs> yes. They're looking at each other, who touched first? And then, then they would argue and, and, yeah. and then track and field stopwatches mm -hmm. then we went to automatic timers we went to this um to me it's going a little bit too far i mean i love the instant replay but i also love i don't love the challenges that extend the games i mean every time there's a pass downfield we're looking now on tv where's the flag mm -hmm. coach are you going to challenge what is the catch and nobody has still explained what is a catch in football, okay? Right? It's, it's, explain that to me. But in high school, it's simple. You know, yeah, you make yeah, you get yeah. control one right, foot. Right. You know, in college, one foot and controlling the right. ball, and you got to right. um, yeah. maintain the catch. Right. You know, even if you're going to the ground, you know, yeah. you got to control yeah. it. You know, 
pro football, I think, is the biggest thing, you know, yeah. because you got to have two feet in yeah. and then maintain, uh, maintain control. Because I was watching the game the other day, um, I think it was uh, Arizona, and I, it's, the official said he was out, but then yeah. they showed the replay and yeah. they slowed it down. You yeah. can see the foot constantly dragging. So they, they reversed the call that it was a catch. You know, but officiating around, it's, it's all judgment. Right. Mm -hmm. But you that's know. part of the game. Yeah, it's all, it's and, all and part and of the game. Don't you think that, that suppose some miracle we had this instant replay in high school? How would you feel with that, the instant replay looking over your back all the time? I think pretty soon at the state championship. Yes, that's you're what gonna I was going to bring up. You're going to see it. At, I, I, I know at the state football championship. I, yeah. Coaches may have a challenge, or it may be a booth challenge. Correct. Something like that. Correct. But, you know, and probably they'll just tell you, make the call. That's it. And then they'll challenge it, and we'll get it right. I know it's all about getting it right. Right. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of times, you know, did you get it right? A lot of times they come back and say, the rule, you know, the yeah. ruling on the field stands. Right. right. So, you know, but now guys just I'll make the call because they're just waiting. Okay, I'll make the call now. They'll. Mm -hmm. That I mean, changes or whatever they're going to do with and it. And you look at baseball. I mean, they're talking about or they had mentioned we don't even need the umpire for 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 strikes and balls. Okay, <laughs> they're going to have they have the charts there. You know, and they're right 99, 98 percent mm -hmm. of the time. But I mean, they got you know they got the cameras in first base. They got the cameras down the line. You know, I I think like you said, part of the game is having the officials involved. If they do make a questionable call, notice I say questionable on <laughs> that, okay? If they do make a questionable call, that's part of the game. Sometimes you have to adjust, okay? And, and, and there's no such thing, and, and I want everybody out there to understand, there's no such thing as a give back call, okay? Yeah. Yeah. There's no thing as a make up call, please don't ever. You know, I, I hear that from the stands all the time. Oh, you're gonna get the next call because they're gonna make a, you guys block that out of your mm -hmm. mind. You know, they, I, I'm still waiting for the first makeup call because they're only about <laughs> 900, right. you yeah. know? Yeah. But th there has never been a, a, a makeup call on that. It, part of the game is a judgment, part of the game. But uh, we're running out of time here. I told you this time would go pretty quick. Um, I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you guys for the jobs that, that you do. Um, it's a thankless job, okay? It, it, it really is. And, um, you know, let's try to, you know, put our brains together and maybe we can go out in the community and we can, you know, try to get these young officials involved. Maybe we could put on something at each high school. I'll be more than willing, mm -hmm. you know? And Bernard, I get two strokes aside when we start playing <laughs> in June. But I, I really want to thank you guys and you guys have been great friends over the years. And thank you. And I want to thank everybody for another edition of Hey Coach.